Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Canyon. Welcome back to another installment of Wheelin' Wednesday. Welcome back to a bonus week of Mavericks. So those of you who don't like Mavericks, I don't apologize. We've got four up on the day and selected. There's def there's enough. We could have two more visitor weeks, right? But we need to do a visitor week because uh, I got a wisdom tooth pulled out because that tooth had gotten, gotten the bad juju in it. Uh, and you know what? I've never had a wisdom tooth pulled before. You know what it is? It's awful. It's absolutely awful. Um, that happened about four days ago at this point. And uh, yeah, it's still not great. Uh, I don't get to eat. I've lost like eight pounds. Um, so, I mean, you know, silver lining, right? Silver lining to everything. So there was no way I had time to get out here over the previous few days and get the kid accustomed to running a camera. So hopefully we'll get, and I, we have yet another anime thing this weekend in Orange County. So I don't even know if we'll get to do it then. When are we gonna get to do Deadline? I don't, I honestly don't know because the weekend after that is my son's birthday. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna clog it up with quick views and whatever we can fit to fill the days. Uh, so we're gonna struggle our way through this. The first guy up today, and I put them in order, just for funsies, I put them in order of what order I think they're going to finish in. We've got that Element Enduro 12, I'm not a fan. We've got the Cross Emo X2, which I lined those two up basically because it's cartoonish. I wanted to see the Emo X2 parked immediately beside the Enduro 12 because it's funny. It's just funny. Uh, immediately beside him, CJ Joe, who is an Axial 10.3 CJ7 with some little Canyon sprinkle on it. And next to him is, I believe, the gentleman, the gentleman whose daughter won the K5, the FMS K5 Blazer. Uh, I believe he has dubbed it Project Optimus. Does that sound right to me? I think so. It comes on the labels and it's genius. Take the lead from Mr. Woodham and if you're sending stuff into the canyon, in the notes section, just put something. Put anything. Call it Project Basketball. Call it Project Optimus. Call it telephone cord. This will help me greatly in accumulating all the parts together so that they all stay together. If something comes and it, sh and it says Project Optimus on it, I know exactly what it's for and that's fantastic. So they are in order of where I think they're going to finish. Also, not only do I think that that Element Enduro 12 is going to do the worst, but I think that it has absolutely zero chance of activating the teeter. And I was digging through parts trying to find something that we could use to make a counterweight on the teeter. And then I remembered that Enduro 12 weighs like a pound. No amount of weight I could put on. That thing basically can't tip the teeter down. It just, it just can't. So we will do it with our foot. And I speculate that based on its size, ability, the only thing to my knowledge that has ever gone around Mavericks on 2S. So that's also not helping. Uh, 385s, are they 385s or sub 385s? This thing has no advantages here. Uh, we might be ready to experience the worst run. Like, it might do worse than Lil Fella. I think that the Emo X beside it is not going to do tremendously because it's enormous, uh, just like from a turning circle aspect, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be terrible. I think the CJ is gonna be right in there, in that, like, that 106 seemed to be the middle point. And I think the vehicle here, rarely do we have a vehicle that seems to be suited specifically to this. But on this day, I think that we do indeed, in the field, have a vehicle suited to running Mavericks, and that is Project Optimus over there, that H10 optic with all of the, the bits and bobs. We'll go over now the bits and bobs that are on each, beginning with the Enduro 12. The Enduro 12 uh, factory electronics are garbage. They are every bit as bad as what Element foists on us in 110 scale, but somehow worse 
not good for crawling, not good for bashing, not good for trailing, not good for anything. Anyone who said that they have any sort of promise whatsoever uh, got slipped money under the table or is actively lying to you for reasons unknown. Uh, it has the wheels, tires, motor, speed control, radio, servo, everything directly out of an Axial UTB-18. And it improved it tremendously. Tremendously. It's still abjectly terrible. It is a rebadged Thunder Tiger from a number of years ago. When did, when did PUBG, the video game, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. When did Player Unknown Battlegrounds become popular? Because the Enduro 12, the, the Element Enduro 12 is just a rebodied, rebadged. They made a whole, Thunder Tiger did a, a series of PUBG themed vehicles. They were not highly regarded. This is that vehicle with an Enduro body on it. Enduro Sendero. I think, is that the Sendero? With a Sendero body on it. There it is. And worse tires and worse electronics. So, so there you go. Is it one of my favorites? Absolutely not. I don't think it should exist. Uh, it is better than it started off, but that's like saying a kick in the shin is better than a kick in the knee. Like, what, let's, let's, let's look at it like that. It's a kick one way or the other. Immediately beside him, the Cross Emo X, which God bless him. God bless Cross for going the other way. Element is making us tiny things that nobody asked for. Cross is making gigantic things that I don't think anybody asked for. It is like 75% the size of an SCX6, but they cost like 500 bucks. And out of the box, super fun. Is it a rock crawler? No. Is it a trail vehicle? Yes. Is it kind of cool? Yes. Uh, can you put 525 tires on it or 54 tires on it and they basically look like class twos? Yes. It is enormous. Uh, it has had some teething problems while getting its electronics replaced. It got into like a surgy uh, 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 issue when we put a gigantic Axe V2 3300 system in it from Hobbywing because it's one of the only vehicles I can think of off the top of my head that is actually suited to an Axe V2 3300 because it is enormous. That 3300 motor looks positively tiny in there. Big 2.2 trio, uh, I think they call them vintages. Vintages or classics with those Proline Swampers, Proline Swampers. Uh, the inserts are not remembered by me. I, I honestly can't remember. Uh, Servo is a 60 kg flash hobby. And in terms of like modifications, nothing. It's it, in, in terms of modifications on the first two in the list, nothing. It's an Emo X2. Uh, and as, as far as a trailing vehicle goes, if you were driving this thing down a woodland trail and some hikers were coming the other way, they would, they would be like, bro, bruh. Like this, this is similar in, in crawler trail vehicle to the Traxxas High Trail, which would attract children uh, like an ice cream truck. Anybody, any Jeep person would want to strike up a conversation with you with the Emo X2. Not specifically a crawler. It's fun though, and it does get a bit of a pretty pass. The my biggest complaint about the Emo X2 is red sand ladders, and the fact that they there's a, a molded driver figure on the inside. I don't think you can see him through the windshield. Uh, he's wearing a helmet. That guy should have like a baseball hat on, cowboy hat maybe. Uh, th those th uh, thus ends my list of complaints. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's got unlockable diffs. It's got a two-speed gearbox. It's got all of the little things we were going to try to use. None of that during this. Yes, let's try to do none of that. Right next to him, another Jeep. An actual, an actual, factual, real deal, licensed Jeep. A CJ7 atop a 10.3 platform. That is CJ Joe, uh, because that's a GI Joe and it's a CJ. It's CJ Joe. Now, is there some stuff on CJ Joe that have been done? Yes. I made a little bracketeer to convert the motor mount to like a, 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 a movable operation so that you can run an outrunner in the front and omit the massive clunky clattery 10-3 gearbox by putting in that front motor mount with a creeper T it drops the weight of the vehicle by over a pound uh, then he's got Proline Toyos Traxxas Big Boars 
flash hobby again, taking care of the servo duties. Rhino V80 and a Rhino S2800 KV. He's got all of the things. That 1800 on a straight axle is gonna be spicy. Uh, so that's why I think that he's gonna come in right behind the optic. The reason that I ended up building Zorana as a CJ and the reason I, I spent far too much money assembling a CJ body was the experience of building, uh, of tuning up the 10.3, the non-base camp 10.3. I, I question a lot of Axial's decisions, a lot of them, but that is a beautiful body. The figure is a little bit undersized. You really need about a seven inch figure for these, but I, I don't have any complaints about its performance. In terms of a vehicle that splits the, 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 the does the dividing line between crawl and trail, that CJ on that 10.3, still on C channels, is fantastic. It, re it really is. And it's so much better than what Axial pedals as the 10.3. They, they must have warehouses full of them. And uh, it, it gets up there into that sparking joy end of the spectrum, which is, is that not what we're looking for? And closing out the group, and the one that I think is going to be the fastest, is old Project Optimus over there. A Vanquish H10 Optic, which we found out real quickly uh, in a moment while I was, I was waiting for something to dry. I was waiting for bubbles to come out of the shocks. I don't remember what I was waiting for. I looked at the body. I grabbed the heat gun. I heated all of the decals off. And I said, oh, my, that, that looks significantly better. He looks like the meanest boy out here. He's the meanest boy on the playground. LP 2.2 J Concepts tusks on the big old Injora brass 2.2s that are 225 grams a wheel, something like that. That the whole core of the wheel is is plated brass in the oil slick. Who doesn't love them? Fusion 2300 amidships flash hobby, taking care of the servo duties. I want to say it's a 60 kg, but I might be wrong. It might be a 58. I'm pretty sure it's a 60 kg. Now, you know what, I'm questioning myself. And sometimes I question myself for a reason because it's all NSDRC in there. It's an RS800 V2, the limited edition, the purple one, with an RS100 operating the dig unit. I realize that on the spinny, spinny, spin, spin, we can't take it apart to see the bits on the inside. It's an optic, so what you see is what you see. The Vanquish dig unit gave us problems. The spools, it's got underdrive spools in both axles to bring the overall speed down. Uh, it, was a, it was a bear putting factory Vanquish parts into that Vanquish vehicle. But I think the end result, it's the, it's the H10 optic that I have been most pleased with. It is almost enjoyable to drive. And it has, it, if anyone here deserves a shot out here at Mavericks, it's that. So if I didn't mention it, I will mention it today. We love to date a video. It's Wednesday, the 28th of August. Wednesday, the 28th of August, 2024. And on the 28th of August, 2021, I uploaded the very first Crawler Canyon video with the voiceover and everything. We had a couple three, four, five minute videos before that, just like running footage. The, the, the videos that I realized at one point, these are the videos that I don't want to watch. So I started making the videos that I wanted to watch. And that's what you're seeing right now. If you're seeing a video that you don't wanna watch right now, I don't understand how you got here. So fool the algorithm and put a comment below. How did you end up here if this is a video you didn't wanna watch? If this is a video that you do wanna watch on the anniversary, uh, throw down a video about how you did end up here. It'll be fun, it'll be fun. We'll clog up the comments. Who doesn't love the comments? So there are your four. That is the order they're gonna run in. I think we have the cameras pretty well placed. We're gonna get everything set up. We're gonna get everything running. Uh, we're going to go what I think is going to be worst to first. And then we're going to put this to bed. And what we do next Wednesday, I genuinely have no idea. So while getting all the cameras fired up, uh, the first thing I did was drive our, our little friend, the Enduro, up here. And I was like, let's see how this guy does it breaching the pipe. You know what? He drove right up on there. Uh, he had way less trouble than a lot of people do. So... I don't know what to, to make of that. Maybe he won't be as bad as I think he will. 
Ah, uh, those tires are so skinny. Oh, the skewers. Well, there's really only one thing to do, isn't there? And let's find out how he's gonna do. Oh, he's zippy. He's zippy and he's bouncy. That's full throttle up that. All right, not bad. Oh, okay. Oh, did we not take the one pound into account? Because he's just kind of bouncing his way through here. Oh, the amount of torque is non-existent. Oh, come on, little guy. Come on, little guy. <laughs> we'll we'll allow it. We'll allow it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have to kick you up, dude. There's no way you make this otherwise. Uh, uh, a little more. There we go. <laughs> he can't. He can't even get it. He can't even. <laughs> the the teeter. He has he has no. Ch oh, I forgot. I had forgotten how bad the turn circle on this is. It is catastrophic. Oh, the mind, the mind reels because on the stock electronics, it was so much worse. You got, yeah, no. I mean, I don't think that that was a, that wasn't a two and a half minute operation. Although, Although, how did we glide so easily through? Okay, now take it in really tight here. Okay, come on. Oh, that steering angle is a horrific. He has one of the worst turning circles of any vehicle that has run Mavericks. He does do a float action right over here. And if, if I'm selling you one thing, <laughs> that's how he did it so fast. There's no way that he can breach back on, uh, onto the rock. He can clear the pipe pretty easily, which is nice. We get him out to the end. We're giving him a little time penalty because, because he's, sh he's shortcutting every lap. He has to. You, you are, there is no steering to this vehicle. It is an on off switch. You are either not steering or you are at full lock. Those, those are your two options. He falls over so easily. It's, it's kind of amazing. There is less than a minute remaining already. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Oh my god. Unself writable. There we go. Oh, it's the steering. I mean Maybe if you have a really big couch, you drive one of these on it. And a lot of people, oh, I got, uh, you know, I didn't raise like a vanquish rant or a red cat level of ire from the, from the peoples. But people were not happy that I didn't like the Enduro 12. It is just so incapable and the UTB 18, or as we call it around here, the UTB 12 exists. It is superior to this vehicle in literally every aspect. This does everything worse than a UTB 18. Everything. Uh, and I mean, there was about 15 seconds left on the timer, so I just let it expire.
We're gonna pick this guy up. He got two and a half laps in in five minutes. I don't think he's gonna be slower than little fella. But that first lap, genuinely surprising. And then he remembered, oh yeah, I'm terrible at this. All right, so I don't think you could go more opposite spectrum than we have moving from Enduro 12 to Emo X. Uh, I can't get it out of what I have to assume is second gear, though with a 3300, I'm not 100% sure this could be first gear. Uh, I think this might actually be first gear. I might have plugged the servo into the wrong uh, plug on there when putting something back together. That is a possibility. So torque is not going to be a problem. I did make sure both differentials are locked because I think we would probably get stuck without them. The Emo X2, it has to weigh eight uh, Enduro 12s. He's a big boy. Oh, I rambled on too long and my timer went to sleep. It's so big. Look at that turn. There is, there has never been anything more damning that has ever occurred here than, uh, than what just happened coming around the top of that turnstile. The turning circle of this is not great. I was going at it way too fast. Okay, here we are. Look at that suspension work. Uh, the turning circle on the Emo X2 is ever so slightly tighter than the turning circle on an Enduro 12. I mean, it's not great. You would have to unlock it. He should have absolutely no problem actuating the teeter. That's the biggest thing. That might be, wow. He was, he was a foot away from the end of the teeter and that thing came down. Here's the thing. We've got so much power and we're so big. Uh, the, the beast, the beast is too big. Let, let's try it. We don't usually do these things, but we're gonna do it today. Oh, that was nice. You just, you have to take it so slowly. We're doing a, we're doing a Matt's off-road recovery lap here. We're seeing how far we can get before we have to lock it. Okay, so this is a thing where I don't recall vehicles getting stuck right there. And uh, we're two for two on getting stuck right there. But when you take this nice and slow, I mean, it looks the part. It has just almost enough steering to do this kind of stuff. It doesn't have it, but it has almost enough. This, well, this course is too small for the size of our buddy, the Emo X. It's, this thing is catastrophically large. I don't know how I got on the teeter. So like, watch how close we have to get to the end. This guy's overpowering the teeter. Okay, let's do that. Let's unlock the front again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It helps. It doesn't fix it, but it helps. Yeah. For the for the opposite reasons. Oh, that that unlock really nice through there. Then we're going to have to lock to make it up the big ramp, I think. For the reasons of opposite spectrum, why the Enduro 12 had struggles, this guy's having struggles for the opposite reason. He's so big. <sighs> Who on their bingo card had, had him getting stuck? I didn't. Okay, now unlock here. Stay out of there. Okay. 
not as agile as uh, some others. And I don't, I don't think that's unexpected. It's enormous. It is cool though, man. I have what I call the pretty pass. The pretty pass gets handed out to a lot of things from FMS. We will forgive some some failings in handling uh, if if there's a reason, right? FMS FJ40, amazing. FMS 1941 Willys MB, amazing. If you had a childhood, the the Willys MB is is a thing, man. It it takes me straight back. I was not a Jeep guy. So some of the luster of the Emo X is lost on me, but not all of it. If this exact platform had like an LC80 on it, oh, hold me back. I'd have bought one already, you know? Or a Hilux even. Oh, imagine a Hilux this size. Just, just an uneventful mashabout by a behemoth. All right, CJ Joe has not been tasked with doing anything remarkably difficult during his build sequence. And I honestly think that since these wheels were fitted, I don't even know if he's been run since these wheels were fitted. Oh my God, my jaw, my jaw. I'm yammering along and my jaw is like, please stop. I can only open a mouth just tinily enough. Uh, uh, here's some fun, here's a fun side note for you. I have to eat uh, macaroni and cheese like a bird. I put it in my mouth and then I kind of tilt my head back like a, like a, like an egret and I just go, oh, I just swallow it because I can't chew on anything. It, uh, it sucks. It super sucks. I feel like we've, uh, I feel like we've made a, a shift. We've made a transitional shift here. <laughs> One of these things is not like the others. Okay. We have definitely made a, oh no. We've definitely made a shift here. He is getting, he is getting that middle hung up. We got to find out the line. He's not a quiet guy. He's a noisy boy. Also has to be taken with a little bit less pepper. Oh, he's like a perfect weight. He's a perfect teeter weight. Yeah, steer, turn in's a good bit better at like a medium rate of speed. Those 2660 big bowers are doing the thing. His suspension looks tremendous. Again, not ultimately suited. Oh, that was nice. Of the three, he has definitely managed the skewers the best. He's not doing as great in that section right there. The, 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 the terrain between the tennis balls there's a tennis ball right there coming out of the skewers. And there's a tennis ball right up here at the top of this rock section. Yes, let's get stuck on the exact same rock four times. There we go. The section between the tennis balls, I, I honestly think is where most of the leaderboard is determined. How quick you can get through that, that really messed up section. This is where certainly seconds are won or lost moving on to and off of the teeter but nothing harms times as badly as coming down out of the turnstile entering the skewers trying to find the clear line to get up against the trees we got to take it super slow here the toyos are doing pretty well they don't have a lot of side lug control. So when he gets a little light under power, uh, they just get kind of skatey. 
Let's try this side a little more. There we go. Nicely through there. I tried for a better entry and got it. There we go. Yeah, there's just... It's a next level in available steering. Okay. Cut in, cut in, cut in. There it is. Okay, the Emo X looked cool coming across the top there. Uh, this guy looks cooler. Something about that open top. Does not quite have the angle to spin it on here, but not bad. The best of the first three. I still think the H10 is the guy to beat on the day. It's part of why he's going last. We get a real crunch. Uh, nosing into the rocks there. I don't know what that crunch is. Is it internal? Is it external? Doesn't sound like Lexan noise, but that's not surprising. Uh-oh. That's not good. <laughs> the actual amount of Lexan in a CJ7 body is really quite small. It's two very small pieces of Lexan and a lot of plastic. Yeah, a little crunchy. Sounds a little crunchy. He is doing... This is just me guessing. We're real early on. He is doing exactly as I would have anticipated. See, that sounded almost like gear crunchy. Don't, I don't think it is, though. He's Otherwise, he's really smooth. And he was the one where I could tell we were actually... We were putting down a couple laps. Put down a couple laps. He's going to come around. Just cannot use a lot of speed out here. I think, I think part of it is the Toyos. When he gets out on the stuff that's properly loose... Okay, we just got to gun this. When he gets out onto properly loose, the Toyo, the lug spacing is so tight on that scale tire that he just runs out of traction. All right, driving it over here into place, the H10 was the, it just drove right up on the pipes like nothing was happening. Uh, if, if there's something suited now, the entrance to the turnstile is absolutely rutted. Uh, like competition was supposed to be done. And then we we're like, ah, let's do visitor week. Uh, so uh, you, you know what you gotta do. H10 guy, let's see if your axles will uh, will turn you in tight enough. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Oh, he kind of looks the part out here too, doesn't he? Oh, that was. You almost outran me, bud. The same, the same hang-up that was uh, getting old CJ Joe got him. Yeah, not quite tight enough. So occasionally you'll you'll hear me punch reverse, and you'll hear a cra. Didn't quite get it there. You'll hear a little, almost like a crunch. That crunch is the dig unit. The little, the little slidey piece is kind of overcoming the fork because we have so much torque out of that Fusion Pro. I mean, I'm not saying that LP tusks are an advantage. But if this thing had a reasonable amount of steering angle. Like this isn't, there's that crunch crunch. This isn't Wolverine territory, but he is pretty good. What, 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 what holds this down? Steer angle. And okay, no, not steer angle. It, it's the turning radius. The steer angle on the H10 looks to be the same as the steer angle on the F10. It just isn't. Oh. 
That was nice through there. It feels maneuverable. It feels agile. I don't like the crunchiness sound coming out of that gearbox. That's not terrible right there. What it feels like, and I've felt this in other rigs, there's speed that we can't use. There's, there's speed that can't be accessed because the, the more brisk you get, the, the looser the turn gets. I'm gonna try out really wide. Nope. Yeah, when it gets into transition, I I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. The shocks haven't like that crunch hitting reverse is alarming. The shocks haven't started to leak their guts out yet. The the damping still feels pretty good. Not quite what we saw suspension-wise from the Emo X, but I don't expect stellar performance out of S80s. I just don't. As far as an RTR shock goes, I mean, they're nicer than Axial, but they're not as nice as Element or Traxxas or Cross or, you know, a lot of them. The springing is reasonably okay once some work has been done to the H10, in stock configuration, what they basically did is they just put Phoenix Springs on this and the weighting isn't right for Phoenix Springs. This is a, it's pretty good. The wheelbase, I can't even say that it's that the wheelbase is too long for the course, which I can say for the cross. There's just something in the front end, the way that four link is done up front, it's not, it's not helping. Uh, I got a notification on my stupid watch and I've lost my timer, so I have no idea how much time we have left. I'm going to assume that we're near the end let me see here no I think we got another we'll, we'll let him go around again why hey uh, makers of things electronics why would you if I have a timer running and I get a notification why would you stop why would you turn my timer window off and show me a notification there it goes it's going off now okay We'll, we'll let him run it out. We got, we got, we got a few seconds here. There's just, I mean, this thing got close in its, its last installment. I, I still think this is going to be a little more brisk than CJ Joe. I think he might have gotten a good one in there, but I don't have an environ that is adequately suited to the H10. It needs like country roads. Uh, you need to be out in the woods. That's that's where this thing is gonna do the things. And uh, here on a closed course, honestly, it didn't even do as well as I would have expected. I think it got hurt by its steer angle or turning radius. That not steer angle, turning radius. Again, really just any excuse to park the Enduro 12 next to the Emo X2 because it's cartoonish. It's absolutely cartoonish. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't notice until we were about midway through uh, blue, uh, black, blue, and gunmetal are the, are the three colors of the day. That's, that's, that's all we've got out here. Uh, except a, little, little, a little pop of color on some wheels. But other than that, we've got some guys and I, I'm, I'm standing by it. I'm doubling down. I feel like uh, worst to first was Enduro 12, Emo X, CJ7, and then the H10. It's close. Now, the, CJ, the way the CJ7 felt and the way the H10 felt were fairly similar. I felt like I had more throttle control on the CJ and less on the Optic because long wheelbase, bigger tire, 2300 kV versus an 1800. Uh, a little bit less gear reduction in the H10, I 
think I want to say me thinks I noticed the lack of power the I mean, and the lack of reduction the least on the emo X like the emo X on open ground right now is is a rocket even and that is low gear by the way I remembered that high gear is like 20 plus miles an hour uh, it's terrifying at full speed uh, it, it, it was the one I noticed the, the the power came on the smoothest and the most predictably and it was the most usable it's just it's far too big for this course it needs I mean it's not anywhere remotely near 10th scale as a matter of fact nothing out here on the course is 10th scale uh, the the CJ we call the CJ 8th scale uh, I would put the optic at about 8th scale as well because it can't be 10th scale with a wheelbase that long it would have a monstrosity of a wheelbase although maybe I mean I've watched off-road recovery videos where the side-by-sides razors and stuff have longer wheelbases than a Chevy Silverado so maybe it is 10th scale maybe it is uh, yeah, I think fourth place is the Enduro 12, uh, third Emo X, second the CJ, and first place the H10. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if I got it right. No one here was particularly well suited to this. The Emo X kind of felt the best overall, but that was because his suspension was nice and glidey and floaty, and he was rocking big tires, and... He is portaled, and everyone else is straight axles. So five two fives and portals. What do we call that? We call that an advantage. Uh, he never really got bellied up out there, twixt the tennis balls, and everybody else did once or twice. He also there was no possibility of bullying by the teeter. The emo X was like, nope. This is my house now, and he just pushed it around. And I still say, as much as the cross platform is a little weird, it's weird the way MST platforms are weird or Charisma, they all do things in their own kind of little odd individual way. Uh, I would still, if they, if Cross came out with that Emo X2, with a, with a body that struck my fancy, I don't know if I would be able to stop myself from getting one. Like, you know, like now all I can think about is like a Hilux. A Hilux on that? Shut up and take my money! Because I'd be all over it. It's, you know, it's an XJ. I like the CJ as a Jeep. You might have noticed over time looking at the Canyon fleet. We don't have a ton of Jeeps here. We don't have a ton of Jeeps. We have a lot of not Jeeps. And uh, that's because, I don't know, I, I guess I missed out on that. Uh, I've never been a truck guy much. And uh, by extension, I've never really been a Jeep guy. I know that's, that's weird. A lot of the crawling guys are, oh, Jeep guys. Uh, I saw an Instagram reel just a day or two ago where somebody said, uh, yeah, the, J the good old Jeep. Uh, I think they said the Rubicon. The Jeep Rubicon is off-road ready once you drive it off the lot and install the 54 parts you need to make it off-road capable. And I just, I just giggled a little. My neighbor owns one, so there you go. I see pictures of when he goes on his, and I'm making air quotes behind the camera, off-roading. So and that's fire roads. It's just like, you do that in a car. Anyway, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get, before I go off on a rant, uh, it was a, it, it, I think that this is a, a fine, Tri triversary, tri tri triversary. This was a fine triversary. Three years of Canyon videos of idiocy and shenanigans with more to come. I mean, I have a hole in my jaw right now and a big lump on the outside. They really had to, they really had to go hammer time. Uh, the dentist remarked that, uh, I believe my paraphrase of his words are, uh, your roots are too strong and your bone is too hard. He broke two burrs and in his words had to switch to the big drill. Uh, tooth pulling is not like it is in the movies if you've never had a tooth pulled. Uh, I've had teeth pulled but I've never had a wisdom tooth pulled. They basically break it into pieces and then yank the chunks out. So I won't get to eat like a cheeseburger or a burrito again for about another 10 days. And uh, I'm super looking forward to that. 
I'm also looking super forward to seeing you guys all again here in, uh, in the canyon in the future. I thank you so much for joining us on this one, on the triversary. I look forward to seeing you in whatever comes next. I hope that in between now and when we meet again, you want and I'll do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We will see you again here from the canyon. Oh, did you see in the video? You can go back. I got my new boots on. I got new boots. I'm new boot goofing. I love Carhartt. They might not make the best boots, but they make my favorite boots. They make a boot called the sneaker boot, and I love it. I love it so much. I love my old Carhartts, and I wore them until the soles fell off. This video is not sponsored or affiliated in any way by Carhartt. These boots were like $100, which for me is a lot. And uh, if Carhartt or and, uh, Canon cameras, all of y'all out there in the world, I'm putting it into the blue skies, into the universe. If Carhartt wants to send me some boots, I'd drive a Husqvarna lawnmower too. I, 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 I just want more boots. Uh, I'll see you all in the next one, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here in the canyon.